So it's been over a year since Act Age came to a swift conclusion, and I don't want to dive too deeply into why that happened. However, one of the things that needs to be said is that when it did conclude, it left a pit inside of me. A pit where I've been actively searching for a series, a manga, that could potentially replace Act Age. And at long last, I might have found something like that. Oshi no Ko is a manga series that has been recommended to me, and it hasn't been recommended to me for years now, or even months. Actually, it's only started to be recommended to me for the past few weeks now, for whatever reason. I don't know who kind of kicked it off, what's going on behind the scenes. However, the series is definitely, I think, getting a little bit more popular, because I have seen a lot of people continuously recommending it to me for the past few weeks. And so I was like, you know what? Sure, I want to sit down, I want to read it, let's see how this is, let's see if I'm going to enjoy it. And also to spice things up for you all, this apparently is also written by the author of Kaguya-sama. So yeah, that, that's, that's a huge shocker right there. Yeah, so the same author that writes Kaguya-sama Love is War is the same author that is writing Oshinoko. Now, just to clarify, Oshinoko, from what I understand, it is not concluded. It is still an ongoing manga being written week to week alongside of Kaguya-sama. So both series are actively going on at once. So this kind of shows the monstrosity that is the mangaka of these series that are able to just pump out two different series at once. Because that that's incredible incredibly difficult. It's already difficult enough to write a manga just by itself, just one manga, but imagine writing, you know, two manga at the same time. That blows my freaking mind to think about. So shout outs to the author of Kaguya-sama and also Oshinoko because of just how crazy of work ethic that must take to be able to get both of these series out. Another thing to kind of add on is that the artwork apparently of Oshinoko is the same artist that did Scum's Wish. So I think many of you most likely have heard about this series. I reviewed it on the channel a long time ago, but it was an anime that definitely made waves at the time when it came out. It was controversial in a lot of areas. I remember really just talking about it heavily. But yeah, that same you know artist that did that series is apparently doing Oshi no Ko. So just, I wanna make sure everybody's on board and kinda who is working on this series and all that, because I think that there's just so much to offer when it comes to what I have read so far. So I pretty much have read a full volume, one full volume of what Oshinoko is currently, and I think because of what I have read so far, there's enough to kind of get a good grasp of what I'm expecting or what I'm going to expect from the manga going forward. So as you already kind of guessed by now, as I said at the beginning of the video, it is kind of trying to replace that hole that was left in me by Act Age, and that's what this series is about. It's about showbiz, acting, idols, all of that. Now, I know many of you kind of tuning in, probably watching this video, and hearing about idols and acting and all that, that might not interest you. However, that's the exact same thing of how I felt when I first sat down to read Act Age. When I sat down for the first time to read Act Age, I was like, an acting series, an acting manga? Like, really? Is this gonna pique my interest? Is this gonna be something that's gonna want me to read it? Because it doesn't sound like anything that you would normally read. Because, as you all know, I read, you know, series about reincarnation, like Asekai's. I read, you know, action stories, psychological stories, and those elements actually do play a part, kind of, in what you know, this series is Oshi no Ko and what Act Age was as well. Some of those elements of, let's say, acting and all that, that, you know, goes into action pack sequences or arts. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like anyone that hasn't read a series like this really should sit down and give it a shot. Even if you're not interested, even, like, if you're not even remotely interested, just give it a shot. Read the first two chapters and see if it is for you or not. If not, that's sad, but that's how it is. But just like I said, I do recommend at least giving it a shot if you're not even interest in what the premise is. So let's actually get into it. So, Oshi no Ko. First chapter is, I think, a really good way to kind of give a presentation on just how the writer can give you twist. Twist and turns and not really know what's going to happen next. For instance, we have where our main male character is a doctor in the first chapter. And he eventually, you know, has this patient that you know, inevitably dies, and apparently this patient, she dies from a tumor in the brain, and before she passed, she was someone that was a big fan of this idol called I. She was a big fan, and she was always talking about her and all of that, and she brought up a question to the doctor, like, hey, you know, if you were to become a child of an actor, 
do you think your life would be good? You would have a really good life because you'd be born into, you know, a celebrity's life. You probably would have a lot of different privileges, etc., that normal people wouldn't have. And when you think about it from the outsider's perspective, that does make a lot of sense. Being born into wealth, being born into, let's say, just, you know, a celebrity-like family, it, it seems like it might be good. It seems like it'd be all sunshine and rainbows, but in reality, it might not be that because obviously at the end of the day, there's things that maybe the celebrities don't talk about. But once again, that's a topic for later in the video. The point though is, is that that is what the character brought up. And so the, you know, the doctor was listening and eventually, you know, she passed away. Fast forward a little bit and you have it to where that same idol that, you know, his patient that passed away talked about visits his clinic in this remote area out in the countryside, and when she visits, she's basically, you know, she's pregnant. For instance, she has two children, she has twins, and she is going to be going into labor very, very soon, and basically, he is someone that has become a mega fan of her. Thanks to, you know, his patient, his lingering attachment to his patient that passed away, he's kind of grown attached to the idol, and in his own way, he's kind of just, you know, continued to watch over the idol and just see, you know, how she is, you know, he's a fan of her, and as he basically is helping her, you know, get ready to have her pregnancy, he gets killed by a crazy stalker. Now, this is an element that happens in these type of stories. I think anyone that has seen any type of idol story or any story about, like, a celebrity in a manga or anime, you know that this is something that typically happens, to where you have a crazy stalker fan that goes in and just kills either the actual celebrity or kills someone else close to that said celebrity because they might be a boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, and that's exactly what happened. You had it to where the doctor, he died. He got killed at the end of the first chapter, and as he was dying, he wished for the, you know, idol to have a good life, and hopefully the children are good, etc., and we fast forward a little bit to chapter two, and he is reborn as one of the idol's children. So now you can already see that this is taking an approach of what Act Age was in terms of like, you know, showbiz, acting the dark side of the entertainment industry, but also it has a twist of a Sekai, reincarnation. I was like, wait a minute, this reminds me a lot of Mushoku Tensei. And I was just like, if you know anything about it, that's kind of how it starts. You have it to where the character and Mushoku Tensei is reborn as a child, and you know, he starts from a young age and he grows up slowly throughout the story that we've seen so far. And that is what is happening in Oshinoko. You have it to where the character starts off as a baby, and now he, throughout the manga for what I'm read from the first volume, he is growing up from baby to an adult slowly, which I think is very fascinating, because this is something that a lot of manga and series, I think, do often, you know, really showcase the development of the character going through the beginning to, you know, the, the future, and I am happy that we didn't have, like, some apparent time skip that skips, like, you know, 10 to 15 years into the future after he was born, you have it to where he is as a baby, and you see him slowly growing with his twin, which that brings up another element. His twin. He has a twin, which is his sister, and it is later revealed in Chapter 3 that this sister of his is actually potentially the girl that passed away. For instance, the patient, the girl that died with the tumor, he actually has her as a sister now, which is very weird, very interesting, and it definitely is going to lead to probably a lot of drama and conflict in the future. I am looking forward to that greatly. So, basically, imagine if Rudy and Mushoku Tensei, he, he was able to have, like, a sister or a sibling that knew everything, all of his circumstances, and also was from the same world he was, imagine how interesting that would be. That's kind of what's happening now. That, that's exactly what's happening in Oshinoko. So I wanted to point out that the series has a lot of uniqueness going for it, and one of the big elements I think that it's trying to tackle from what I've seen so far is the cruelty of the entertainment industry. It isn't all, like I said, sunshine and rainbows. There is a lot of darker things going on behind the scenes to, you know, crazy stalkers. You have individuals that, you know, are willing to throw you under the rug for their own gain and just how cruel showbiz can be. For instance, how, you know, you have kids that have to act at a very early age and put on this fake mask, this face from such a young age that you wonder if they truly are going to grow up to be a good person. There is a lot of things that the series so far has tackled in the first volume that I am really enjoying and it's exactly what Act Age was tackling in certain themes, but I feel like because this series isn't restricted to just acting, 
this series has a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to expand and become something much greater than Act Age ever was. Because, once again, what Act Age had was acting. This series has acting, idol work, and it also has a family circumstance with the idol having two kids. Which, that's something I've actually neglected to talk about. The idol I, which is now the mother of our main male and female character, she is trying to keep her kids a secret. So she's living a double life. That is a big detail, by the way, I've neglected to talk about. She is living a double life. So she's trying to do her work, her showbiz, everything, while keeping her kids a secret and trying to maintain a family relationship with them. And her overall reasoning for this is that she's always wanted a family because she was an orphan. She never had anyone. So it already goes to show that she might not be the best mother, but it definitely leads into something that's going to probably be interesting going forward. A lot of character on a lot of psychological themes, etc., depending on where the story wants to go. And on top of all of that, we also need to factor in that, you know, her kids could be in danger as well. Because we know what happened to the doctor. I talked about it earlier, and that happened in the first chapter. And the dude that did it obviously knows something about I. We don't really know who he is fully, but we know he knows something. And that means that her kids and her... They're all in danger. They're all in danger right now, and that can easily pop up in the future where someone goes crazy and wants to take a whack at one of the kids or whatever. So that is, that's actually very scary, and I wonder where the series is going to go with that type of theme. But I think so far from what I have read, it is engaging enough to where I'm going to catch up. I'm going to catch up with it, and I think that this series, as I said, is a very good replacement for Act Age, at the very least for me. It is the, the Act Age replacement that I needed, and I'm happy to say those words, because I missed a story like this, I'm glad to have something like this, and hopefully everybody gives this story a shot as well, because it's, it's a good manga, it's a really good manga, it's heavily like, expired, I think, by Act Age, maybe, to a certain extent, and I also think that, uh, it's, you know, just, I don't know, it's unique. It's really the word that comes to mind. It's so unique. It's so different. Give it a shot. You might like it, but I guess I'm gonna leave it at that. I just, I think that this series, I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. Cannot wait to catch up, but I guess I'll leave it at that. Be safe. Stay healthy, everyone. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like, and with that, chibi out.